Welcome back! Today we are jumping back into tutorials, so thank you for sticking with me through all the Game Jam stuff. If you're just here for the tutorials, then uh, you'll be happy about today's video. Today, we are going to be talking about how to set up a swimming movement mechanic in your Unity VR game. I've been getting a lot of requests about how I did mine for the VR Jam Jam game that I made, and so today, I'll show you how to make it all the way from scratch. I just want to let you know you can download the full project, all the source code and everything, even from all of my previous tutorials, if you support me on Patreon. So there's a link down below, and uh, I'll put it up in the corner as well. So if you would like to support me and get access to all of the source code and get videos early and ad-free videos and whatnot, then um, consider helping out the channel. It really, uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into it. So I'm going to be starting off in Unity 2021.2.10. This tutorial should work on anything that is 2020.2 and above. You just know that some of the uh, menu settings and whatnot might be a little bit different. We're just going to use a regular 3D core project. All right, so we're going to add in the swimming elements first, and then after we get all the swimming code and whatnot written up, we'll come back and add in XR, and I'll show you all how to walk through that process. So first, let's right click in our project file. Let's create a new uh, scripts folder. And then inside of that, I'm going to right click, create C Sharp script, and we'll name this swimmer. Because this will be the component that we add on to anything that is a swimmer. All right, so the swimmer script, I'm just gonna delete all of this startup code and we'll start it back up from scratch. For the swimming functionality, we want to have a couple of variables. One is a swim force, so how quickly do you swim through the environment? We need a drag force, so how much drag does the water push back on us? So after we release our swim motion, we should slow down and stop eventually, or maybe just drift with a very slight speed kind of thing. And then we're going to also add in a, a few gameplay limitations. So we have a minimum force, almost like the joystick dead zone. If your joystick starts to fail a little bit, then that could be manipulated a little bit by y'all. And then we're also going to have a variable that is time between strokes. So if you and your gameplay want to limit the speed at which the player can swim, um, or the amount of strokes per second, then you'll have that option here as well. Also, in full disclosure, I am adapting this code and updating it a little bit from a tutorial video I saw on YouTube. This tutorial is from Game Dev Chief. Really good channel, VR content, and normal just gameplay content. And so there's a little bit of an outdated tutorial as far as VR goes. So he was using Oculus integration in his. So I just kind of used that code as a starting point and adapted it to our purposes. Just wanted to give credit where credit's due. I didn't totally come up with this script myself. I uh, use the internet quite a bit when I'm developing. So let's create some of those variables. We need a serialized field of float. The first one will be our swim force. And we're going to set that to something like 2. The next serialized field is also going to be a float. And this is going to be our drag force. And we'll set that one equal to about 1. The next serialized field is going to be our minimum force. So it'll also be a float min force. And that one we can leave set at zero. It, for my particular game, I didn't increase the minimum force or the interval time. So, which is the last variable. So min interval min time between strokes. And I'm going to come back up here and add a header above these. And this is just going to be called values. And then we need to add in some references. So we need a reference to our whatever button we want to use as the grip button. Um, and so we're effectively going to grip the water and then pull ourselves through and then let go. And that will kind of allow us to drift. Since we can't very accurately judge the uh, aerodynamics of your hands, or the fluid dynamics in this case. So we're just going to say when you're gripping, you're actually trying to push yourself through the water. And so we need access to whether that grip is being pressed or not. And then we're also going to need access to the velocity value of the controllers, which we can use um, as an input value as well. 
all these are going to be serialized fields and input action references. The first one's going to be the left controller swim reference. And you'll notice that my IntelliSense is marking the input action reference as undefined, doesn't know what it is, I can't even import a using statement using this as well. So we need to go back into Unity and swap over to the new input system in order to use this. And you'll see I'm getting that error here in Unity as well. So to fix this, we just need to go to Package Manager. And then inside of Unity Registry, so I'm going to click on Packages dropdown, Unity Registry, and then we're going to find the input system. And install that. And that'll swap us over to the new input system. We'll get a pop-up prompt that says, would you like to restart Unity? Because when you do, we're going to swap you over to the new input system. And now that we've downloaded the new input system, we can go over to Project Settings, Player, scroll all the way down and then you'll see here underneath the configuration section there is active input handling so we're going to swap from old to new and it's going to say we must restart unity in order to apply these changes so just hit apply and it'll restart your unity project we have errors in our code and so when we return back into unity it's going to give us another pop-up and say hey there's some errors here do you want to go into safe mode and since we actually know the project, we're coding the project, I'm just going to ignore and it'll open up Unity with all the features available to us and instead of running in safe mode. And you can see here now we're using the new input system, so we can go back to our script. And then we now have the option, if I press Alt-Enter in Writer, if you press Control period in Visual Studio, both of those actions are hotkeys to add in this using Unity Engine dot input system up here at the top. And now all those errors are resolved and we can continue on adding in the variables. So the next one is going to be serialized field input input action reference again. And this one is going to be the left controller velocity. And then I'm just going to copy and paste both of these fields. So highlight them, press Control D, that'll duplicate it. And change the left word to right. And then the last exposed variable we need is going to be wherever we want the forward direction to be. So most games will allow you to either use your hand as a forward direction, so wherever you're pointing your hand, usually this is used for shooter games, or just wherever your head is pointing, that's going to be forward. So in this case, we're going to end up using the head as the forward direction reference. This again is going to be a serialized field, but instead of an input action reference, it's going to be a transform. And we'll just call this forward reference. And then two more variables we need to add. These are both going to be private. We need access to the rigid body on the game object that this script is on, because we want to do this all using physics. We don't want to just push the uh, player just in case they hit a wall or something we're going to use the unity physics system for the swimming effect and that will integrate nicely with a lot of other unity features and then we're also going to have a timer so this cooldown timer will help us calculate the time between strokes and if the player is allowed to do another stroke we're going to call this float underscore cooldown timer all right, so now we can start using all of these variables. First things first, we need to go ahead and cache our rigid body. So in the awake statement, we're going to say rigid body equals get component of type rigid body. And then best practice for this is if you're using this kind of get component caching, then up here above the class, we want to add in a square bracket required component type of and then whatever type of component you need to also have attached to this game object so we're just going to say rigid body so now this will never give us an error because no matter where we put the script it's always going to automatically add on a rigid body as well 
And then a couple of settings we can update for the rigid body. The first one is going to be preventing gravity. So we're going to do rigid body dot use gravity is going to equal false. This will kind of give you that floating swimming effect. And then secondly, this is just something I like to do on all of my VR games is prevent the rotations of the rigid body. So the player doesn't fall over because that's very motion sick. So we're going to say rigidbody.constraints is going to equal rigidbodyconstraints.freeze rotation. And that's all the setup we need. Now we can actually get into the update method. And we're going to use the fixed update method because we're going to be using physics in this particular case. So fixed update. And then first thing we need to do is increase the cooldown timer. So cooldown timer plus equals time dot fix delta time and then we're going to have an if statement and we say if we are above however long the cooldown timer is so if the cooldown timer is greater than the min time between strokes and we also want to check if both of the actions for swimming are also being pressed so in this case that we're going to set up both of the grip buttons have to be pressed in order to do that stroke in order to add any force or anything so we want to do both of those checks in this if statement as well. So I'm going to kind of space it out a little nice here and do it line by line. If the cooldown timer is above the minimum cooldown time and the left controller swim reference dot action dot is pressed, since we're going to set this up as a button action, we'll have to go back in and make sure we set up all of the actions correctly and then enter and the right same thing for the right. Right controller swim reference dot action dot is pressed. So all three of these need to be true in order to perform a swim action. The next thing we need to check is is the combined velocity of both of the hands greater than that minimum force, the dead zone value that we have. So first thing we need to do is actually get both of the velocities. So we're going to do var left hand velocity. And that's going to be equal to the left controller velocity dot action dot read value. And we're going to read that value in as a vector three. And we'll go back in and set this up in Unity a little bit later. We're going to need to create a whole new action called velocity. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to duplicate this line by pressing control D, or you could just copy and paste. And then I'm going to change this to right hand and then change the left controller to right controller. And then all we need to do to calculate the entire velocity is add them together. So vector three local velocity is going to be equal to left hand velocity plus right hand velocity. And then since we want to effectively make that velocity be the opposite direction that we're pulling. So if we're pulling in this direction, we want our force to actually be going forward. So if we're pulling backwards, we want to be going forward because that's a natural swim motion. So we're going to invert the velocity. Local velocity is going to be multiplied by negative one. So times equal negative one. Okay, we have the velocity now. Now we just need to check and make sure that it is over our minimum velocity threshold. So if the local velocity, and then you could just say magnitude here, but we're going to use the square magnitude. To get the magnitude, Unity has to do some square root and a little bit of complicated math. And so we're going to give Unity a little bit of a performance break and say, okay, we only need the square magnitude. You don't need to actually take the root of the magnitude. So we're going to say local velocity square magnitude is greater than, and so in order to remedy this, we just need to multiply force by force. So we need a square force. Um, so like, you know, back in basic algebra, when um, you perform something on one side, you got to perform the same thing on the other side. So we uh, effectively squared magnitude, so we need to square the force that we're checking against. And the whole reason we're doing this instead of just saying magnitude is greater than force is because of the performance reasons. The square magnitude is uh, a lot faster. So now we've gotten to the point where we're actually going to perform the force. So we're actually going to apply that force to our player that is swimming. 
and we need to first convert this local velocity that we've calculated to a world velocity in order to apply that because the rigid body dot add force only takes in world velocity so this is going to be a vector 3 world velocity and that's going to be equal to our forward reference so we're going to use the forward reference to calculate how our velocity is transform direction and that's going to be our local velocity actually that's not right so the forward reference i'm actually going to rename to tracking reference so we don't need a forward direction more as we need the kind of the parent object that we're tracking and say okay however fast this parent object is moving that's where we want to convert the uh, world velocity to so i'm going to highlight the variable i want to rename press control and then hit r twice and that will bring up a renaming menu or if you're using visual studio it should just highlight the whole word and now you can start typing and it'll rename and so instead of forward reference we're going to use do we'll do tracking so tracking reference so we're renaming this i, I got a little confused here at the beginning of this um, instead of doing a forward reference we're doing a tracking reference so we don't care about the rotation we're caring more about how quickly this object is moving and so this is going to end up being our parent object so the xr origin in this case and then we have a reference to the rigid body we're going to add a force to that and the force is just going to be the world velocity multiplied by whatever the swim force is and then that force mode is going to be acceleration we can continuously add to that force if we got to this point, we can reset our cooldown timer. So cooldown timer is going to be equal to zero. So we've applied a force, but at this point, we're never going to slow down. So if we do a swim motion, we will apply that force. But the only way to slow down would be to do a swimming motion in the other direction, which is not kind of what we want to do. So we're going to apply the water's drag force now. So we're going to first check to make sure that the player is actually moving. We don't want to perform a force on them if they're not moving. So we're just going to say rigidbody.velocity.square magnitude again. And if that is greater than a small value like 0 0.01, then we can apply an opposite force to wherever the player is pointing. We'll do rigidbody.addForce, and then we'll just do the opposite of whatever the rigidbody velocity is. So rigidbody dot velocity so notice i put the negative in front of it multiply that by our drag force and then this will also be an acceleration force mode and there we go that's the whole swimming script so you have a bunch of values here i'm going to add a header here and call this references so we have our values we have our references um, we changed the forward reference to tracking reference so it makes a little more sense as far as naming purposes go we set up our rigid body values here at the beginning some of the settings and then in the main part of the code the fixed update we are checking to see if we're within the cooldown timer range if we are and we're pressing both of the buttons on the controller then we can calculate our velocity and then if our velocity is over that dead value the minimum velocity then we can actually apply that force to our player. And then here at the very end, we are just applying a drag force whenever the player is moving, as long as the player is moving greater than some small value. So let's jump back into Unity and set this whole thing up. So first we're gonna to need to add in the XR components and whatnot. So I'm gonna run through that really quick. If you're interested in a more detailed breakdown of how to set up, VR for your project then I have a whole video about that so just check it out up in the corner and it's also going to be linked down in the description for a more in-depth setup video. So let's go through this really quick go to project settings XR plugin management install XR plugin management we're going to be using the open XR plugin provider so check that box and it'll give you a little warning pop-up so click on the warning and then we need to go fix all the warnings so Click edit, which will bring you from XR plugin management to open XR. And then what it wants us to do is add in an interaction profile. In my case, we're going to be using the Oculus touch profile. So this will work with the Rift, the quests, all those. If you are using another headset, just make sure to find that particular profile. I'm going to swap to multi-pass render mode. It requires a little more performance, but uh, you, I 
tend to get better results with that. I'm not going to mess with the Android settings. If you want a detailed breakdown of the Android settings, go watch that setup video that I made. And then we need to download the XR Interaction Toolkit. So let's go over to Package Manager. And then we're not going to be able to find it here because in the 2021 version, even if you are enabling pre-release packages, the packages for some reason still don't show up. So we're going to add it manually. So click on the plus button, go to add package from git URL, and we're going to type in com, com .unity .xr .interaction toolkit, And that'll manually download the interaction toolkit for us. The toolkit was recently updated from a 1.0 to a 2.0. And so if you're using the 1.0, um, doing this will actually give you some errors. Um, but since this is from scratch project, we'll just click I made a backup, go ahead. Just letting us know that there are some breaking changes between the versions. And then we need to import the sample default input actions. So make sure to expand samples and import that default input action. Just so we don't have to go back and you know set up all the interactions and buttons manually. And then over in the project panel, we'll go to our new samples folder that got downloaded. Go all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to enable the action-based continuous turn sample, the both of the controller samples, and the snap turn sample. And then over in our project settings, go up to preset manager. And you should see all of the samples that we just added. And we just need to specify between the left and the right controllers. So in the filter, just say right and left next to the appropriate controller. And now we're all set up and we can start to add in our XR origin. So right click, go to XR, and XR origin action based is the one we want. And it's gonna pop up also an XR interaction manager. So click on that one, click add component, click on input action manager, add that add input action manager component to it. Hit the plus underneath action assets, click on the target, and then we can use our XRI default input actions. Finally, I'm going to right click, go to XR, add in a locomotion system. And all the locomotion system in here, so I'm gonna remove the teleport and keep snap turning. So I really just added this in so we can snap turn around. In your XR origin, you should be able to check to make sure you set everything up correctly as long as you're getting left hand actions in the left hand and right hand actions in the right hand. Now, let's set up our swimmer component. So on the XR origin, which is going to be our player, I'm just going to rename it to player. We can add a component and we'll add that swimmer component. And it's going to automatically add on a rigid body. And we can uncheck use gravity and do the constraints manually if we want to, but those are all set up in the settings. We could also swap collision detection to continuous dynamic just to give it a little uh, more precise control over the uh, collisions there. And I can collapse that. So now in our swimmer script, we need to set up these values. So the values at the top are already set up because we configured them in the script. So we don't need to change these, but the references we need to set. So we have a left controller swim button. We're just gonna use the select action for that. And then we also have a right controller swim button and that's going to be our right controller right hand select but we don't have velocities so i'm going to go into our input actions so the samples folder that we got the xr interaction toolkit and then this xri default input actions sample and then on the left hand controller we're going to add a new action that we want to track and we'll call this velocity and this is going to be a value action type, and the control type is going to be a vector 3. And then inside the binding, the uh, there's one weird quirk about this. So you could do XR controller, left hand, optional controls, and then use device velocity. But for some reason, that doesn't quite work with the uh, all the controllers yet. So we're going to set it up by particular controller. So since I'm using an Oculus Touch controller, I'm going to go into XR Devices, Oculus Touch controller, make sure we're using OpenXR, not OpenVR, and then the left hand, and then we can use the device velocity for that. 
and then we're going to go to the right hand, set up the same thing. So a new velocity action. The action type is value. The control type is a vector three. And then the binding is going to not be the left hand. It's going to be the right hand velocity. There we go. Hit save asset. And then we can close out of this window. And then back onto our player in the hierarchy. We can now set up the left controller velocity and the right controller velocity. So we should see in this list now a left hand slash velocity. And then same thing for the right hand. Right hand slash velocity. There we go. And then finally, the tracking reference can just be the player parent object. We could have just had this reference itself, but for configurability, um, I made it a value they actually have to add. And now uh, we could turn off our left and right hand controller laser pointers because those are going to be uh, spun up. So I'm going to select both of them by holding down the control button. And then inside of the XR interactor line visual, I'm just going to turn both of these alpha values all the way off. So for the um, valid and invalid, alpha values are going to be all the way to the bottom. So you can still point at and grab things with the line visual, you just won't be able to see whether you're pointing at something or not. I would recommend trying to use the reticle system because that is a lot more uh, professional um, for that particular purpose. All right, and the last thing we need to do is let's just add in a 3D plane so we can actually see where we are moving around. And then I'm gonna bring our player up a little bit. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot is we need a collider. So the rigid body is actually not going to do anything without a collider to reference the uh, collisions and whatnot. So on our main camera, we're going to add a sphere collider. And then we'll scale the radius down to like 0.25 is probably good. And then I'm going to zoom in here so you can actually watch my character swim about. Let me make sure my headset is turned on. There we go. So if we hit play, you should be able to watch this camera here. And I can swim about. So I can go down and backwards and sideways and up and down. And it kind of drifts me a little bit, but then I stop, and then I also can't go through the floor. So no matter how hard I try, I can't swim through the floor. And now you could add in hand models or fin models to your hands to act as flippers. Um, you can add in some uh, water Coriolis effect. I forget what that's called. Um, you know, tint the world blue, add in a cool little ocean floor. Do a whole bunch of stuff and this is your very basic setup of a swimming movement system so like i said before if you would like to download this whole project you can support me on patreon and get the project there or if you're trying to do it yourself and you run into some issues join our discord we have a really helpful really good community of people that you can ask your question and everyone is really helpful in there so Come join the Discord, hang out, um, and you'll get notified when I go live and whatnot. Speaking of notifications, make sure you turn the notification bell on so that you do know the next time I upload a video. If you would like to see a specific tutorial, then just leave a comment for me down below, and uh, I respond to every single comment still. I, I'll prove it. <laughs> just look below. I've responded to every single one. Thank you for hanging out. If you made it to the end of this video, I really especially appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.